Let's just start off by looking at uh, the liquidity scenario that is playing out because it seems that it's starting to affect the interbank market rate as well as the overall interest rates as well. Give us an indication of how uh, the mopping up of liquidity is starting to play out. Um, basically, what we're seeing on the interbank market is there's quite a bit of liquidity that's, that has come in since um, the beginning of the year. Although it seems to be um, skewed mostly to, to, to some players in the market, but we, because what we've seen since uh, the beginning of February was um, the rate, the interbank rate came off, it, um, went to a low of about almost 10%. But um, as we closed last week, we saw it rise and hit a high of 22% as um, liquidity tightened, because we saw CBK, they came in and mopped up um, funds through the repo um, and the prime rate auctions. So um, they've been consistently mopping up uh, uh, liquidity from the market since um, the beginning of the year, actually. So I think it's only one week where, where they weren't in the repo market. And this is line, in line with their tightening policy, which, I mean, they are still sticking to us per the last MPC meeting. Well, Ken, is this now mopping up liquidity going to bring down the uh, rate consistently going forward? Is this the kind of move that we could actually expect, given the fact that we have seen uh, the central bank stepping in to this extent? Um, yes, of course, we have seen rates coming down across um, the short end. They've been rather stagnant at the long end, but this is not due to lack of demand. I think basically it's due to lack of trades uh, to, to, to help push the yields further for on the secondary market, to help the push the yields further down, because um, we're seeing very tight, um, I mean, a really illiquid market, especially looking at tenors from 10 years going going forward. And basically, this is because most investors would rather hold on to these papers and um, watch for rates to come off further. But at the short end, we have seen rates coming off. We expect them to continue coming off. And what we're actually seeing now is um, the market uh, investors beginning to undercut each other. So now investors are not going in for possibly the best yield. What they're going looking at now is getting an allocation because um, CBK has, is actually kicking out quite a lot of bids. And um, the, t the prime rates have come down consistently for the last uh, four weeks. So there's a lot of undercutting. And of course, this, this helps um, with, with demand and pushes rates further down. Let's also touch on uh, a lot of the news that is coming through with regards to uh, the one-year bond. Give us an indication of the appetite that we could expect as well and what kind of trends do you think that this one-year bond is actually going to set going forward? Um, I mean, going by what we saw um, during the January auction where CBK was looking for about uh, 10 billion, they received bids worth um, over 31 billion shillings, picked 14 from the market. We expect the same to play out um, this time around with a lot more investors aware that this may be um, the last, the last uh, one-year bond we're seeing for this financial year because the indications we may have a slightly longer paper um, come, I mean, going forward. So we should see um, heavy of subscription. And um, speaking of rates, I think um, we're looking at rates of between probably um, 19 to 20%. The last one came in at about 20%. We expect this to come off further. And uh, going by where the paper is trading on the secondary market, the, uh, that's the one year that was issued in January, which is trading yeah. at levels of about 18%. Uh, Ken, I mean, do you think that it is a wise idea that this is the last one year uh, paper that we'll see in this financial year? Do you think that there is just a lot more appetite at the longer end of the curve? Um, yes, there is actually quite a bit of appetite at the long end of the curve. But um, what, what happened was CBK could not actually afford to issue papers, long, long-term papers, or even five-year papers, because I'm um, looking at where inflation was, where interest rates were. Of the bids, I mean, it would have been very expensive money. Bids would probably have come at above levels of 23 to 28%. So now, as we see inflation coming off, um, now, I mean, they're a bit more comfortable. They have, they have a bit more breathing space. So, and they've actually been able to pick up quite a bit of uh, funding from the one-year papers uh, and two-year, actually, which is the short papers they started issuing in November. So in a way, we can say they've been able to um, front load somewhat. And also from the, um, the debt, the loan we're expecting of about $600 million. So they're more comfortable now to issue uh, a longer paper, five years and above. 
and they can actually determine where they want the rate. They're, I mean, the market won't be able to dictate um, the rate as would have been the case um, about two, three months ago. Ken, the uh, central bank has, of course, ensured that the uh, shilling has strengthened. In fact, it's strengthened by around 2.4% so far uh, this year. And this mostly helped by the open market operations, uh, which, of course, have been embarked on by the central bank. But it has been said that it has been a very costly exercise and this cannot be maintained going forward. Is this your view as well? Do you think that there is a large risk that the shilling could actually depreciate from these levels? Um, of course, we, um, for example, in the last, I would say probably the last week, the shilling has been trading mostly range bound. Um, I mean, of course, it, touch, it touched a low of about uh, 82.90, back up to about 83.20, 83.50. So um, it's been range bound for most, mo I mean, the last uh, one week. As we approach probably the end of the month, we may see some, um, some, some uh, movement either way. Of course, we expect it may weaken somewhat. But at the moment, we are seeing um, equal flows both ways on the buy and the sell side. Um, going forward, it, it's a bit hard to determine um, how, how the shilling will move. We expect it, of course, to stay below levels, of, I mean, around levels of uh, 85, around range bound, around levels of 85 shillings. Um, in the second half, as I've said before, it's, quite, it's a bit hard to determine um, if, what way the shilling may move. Let's also just touch on the overall equity market, Ken. The truth of the matter is that we've actually seen uh, a bit of nervousness as well, that nervousness that has actually filtered through. We've got a very high interest rate environment. Inflation still looking quite strong, but there is an expectation that we could actually see this coming through at a much softer level throughout the year. How's the macroeconomic environment going to affect the overall view on the equity market? Because the truth is earnings are going to be affected by, what ac by what's actually happening on the ground. Um, I think for the equity market, we're seeing a lot of investors are very bullish for 2013. But uh, for 2012, there's still um, a lot of, I mean, market is anxious. Um, the, I mean, everyone is, most people are taking a uh, sit back and watch view, especially local investors. We may see them coming in now and then, um, like we did today. We saw quite a bit of uh, local activity on uh, East African breweries. I mean, that, that's the most activity we've seen um, from local investors in a while. Mo our, foreign, um, our equity market has mostly been a foreign play, especially on counters such as Safaricom. Um, but going forward, I think most market players are just watch, sit, taking a seat back and watching the way market. They may realign their portfolios now and then. Uh, we may see some trades across their own books. But um, we expect the market to stay mostly flat most of uh, 2012. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Ken. Great to have you on the program.